What's going on internet? IG here again with another Linux distro review. Today I'm looking at Fedora 18. Now, as most of you know, Fedora is a distribution that is kind of a testbed for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and it usually incorporates quite a few new technologies under the hood, but keeps a very vanilla layer uh, presented on top. So you have very vanilla desktop packages such as GNOME, KDE, LXD, XFCE, and in Fedora 18, we have the recent inclusion of Cinnamon and Mate, or the Mate desktop environment, the GNOME 2 fork. So I'm gonna be taking a very, very, very quick look here at what's going on in GNOME uh, in the GNOME edition of Fedora. And then I'm gonna spend some time in both Mate and Cinnamon uh, because they are new and they, and I will share my thoughts on my preferences there. Now Fedora 18 has had quite a few improvements under the hood. Under the hood we've got system storage management which can help you manage devices, storage pools, uh, volume snapshots, things like that. We've got Samba 4 as well. We also have cloud support coming in form of Eucalyptus, the private infrastructure as a service management, and also the release of OpenStack. So Fedora is ready to be used uh, in the cloud. You've got some very cool virtualization tools as per normal. And you've got a completely reworked installer, which in my opinion, the installer is not too shabby. It makes it much easier for a new user to figure out what they're doing. However, by hiding some of the options from the user, you do run the risk of accidentally doing something that you don't wanna do in the installer without realizing it until after the fact. I would strongly recommend that a new user doesn't try to use Fedora because of the fact it is a bit of a testbed and it's something that requires previous knowledge in the Linux user space. So that's about all there is to Fedora 18 on the back end, but now on the face level, we've got GNOME 3.6, which I haven't really had a look at GNOME 3.6, so we'll just fly through that very quickly and see if there's any notable features or improvements here that we can speak about. When it comes to the core GNOME applications, the uh, the library is expanding as far as what applications the GNOME team are taking on, including a recent uh, introduction of the virtualization software known as Boxes, and, uh, and also we've got a few reworked tools such as Disks, for disk management. It used to be called Disk Utility, now it's just known as Disks. And they've got quite a few simplified applications along that vein to make using your system that bit easier. Now, of course, GNOME Shell is still GNOME Shell and it's very oversimplified and obviously that's what GNOME is going for, uh, for the good or for the worse of the general Linux community. Now, of course, GNOME is making more and more sense in a touchscreen user space and with laptops coming out with touchscreens, I think it's not a bad idea but uh, I definitely think it's worth looking at other options first because for me personally, I find GNOME 3 in its vanilla state uh, fairly frustrating because GNOME's general trend over the last couple of releases has been to uh, gradually remove usability from the user space, giving them a simplified option, something that's not terribly complicated uh, and it's easy to pick up and use. But for those who do wanna actually get complicated work done, uh, the, yeah, your options aren't there anymore, such as the Nautilus in 3.6, is uh, lacking a, 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 an amazing amount of features compared to what Nautilus 3.4 was. And this is this is kind of sad to see because Nautilus was a great file browser. Now it looks very nice, it's very simplified and it looks quite modern uh, apart from the butt ugly icon theme, but that's not to deny the fact that it is missing a lot of functionality. Now again, these things don't really have to do with Fedora as much as it is the GNOME project. Really this simplification trend is translated across all of the GNOME apps, gradually being reworked into a very touch friendly big and bubbly type user interface. It's also worth mentioning that GNOME does indeed have a new lock screen and login manager. So you can see here that this is what the login manager looks like and you, you are gonna notice this login manager on any other uh, desktop that uses the GNOME environment by default. So let's have a quick look at Mate or Mate, the GNOME 2 fork of the GNOME project. Now the first thing you are going to notice about the Mate edition is that it is a whole lot faster than what GNOME Shell is. On old hardware, new hardware, it doesn't really matter. And the very familiar user interface, the two panel layout, and some old terminology and system submenus. This is not a bad way to go. If you use the network installer of the Fedora uh, install, you download about 300 megs uh, of an ISO, then you can simply download the Mate desktop straight off the server so you have a freshly installed system without too many duplicate entries. Because you can see here I've got some duplicate entries based on the GNOME 2 or the Mate fork and then the GNOME 3 edition. Visibly there's not too much difference except for the theming. You can see the theming for any GNOME 3 application is pretty ugly. So that's why I recommend doing the network install if you want to enjoy the Mate desktop. The file manager is here with all of its feature-esque glory. 
And of course, you can add themes and backgrounds and fonts to your heart's content as it was oh, about two or three years ago now. Granted, it's not the most ele elegant looking theme and wallpaper and icons out of the box, but Fedora has never been known for a fantastic out of the box experience. Package management is capable, but it's not exactly user friendly in the way that you go about managing your software. So if you have limited resources or you are used to a traditional desktop paradigm, then definitely check out the Mate edition or down, at least download and install the Mate desktop on top of Fedora 18 and you should be good to go. You definitely notice the speed improvements, uh, the boot times are considerably faster, login time is faster as well, so it's definitely worth a look. Lastly, we have the Cinnamon desktop environment, my personal favorite and uh, pick for the Fedora 18 release cycle. It is newly available in Fedora 18, just like the Mate edition, but to me this one adds a perfect blend of new technologies and old school functionality. It's being actively developed and added to all the time. And of course now it has its own file manager as well, which still retains all of the old GNOME file manager functionality. Again, Cinnamon Desktop is a very snappy desktop environment. And then of course when it comes to finding some nice customization options, you're not going to be left in the dark. For example, if you want to customize the Cinnamon Desktop at all, you can always go into the Cinnamon settings and you can change nearly everything about the system. Backgrounds, themes, wallpapers, hot corners, animations, how many workspaces you have, dynamic workspaces, fonts, everything to do with how the system looks, which is very, very nice. You can also add those applets and extensions that we all enjoy. And you can change the panel layouts as well to have a classic desktop paradigm, Windows or a more Mac oriented system. Overall, it's fantastic to see that this desktop environment and Mate have been ported over to Fedora as well, as Fedora is badly in need of decent desktop managers. As far as Fedora 18 itself goes, I don't see any striking problems or reasons to upgrade unless you are, of course, uh, administrating a cloud computing based environment, then you are going to benefit from the tools that they roll in there for the purpose of uh, the Red Hat Linux down the track. It's a solid performer, it uses resources wisely. Boot time is nothing to speak about because boot time nowadays across most systems is pretty decent. You're probably going to spend more time waiting for your desktop to log in than you are to boot, especially if you're on an SSD. And that's really all there is to show you with Fedora 18. So Fedora is an interesting middle of the road distribution in that it's not focused to be super user friendly and it's not really focused to be a bleeding edge distribution, but it is supposed to be somewhere in the middle. I think for desktop enthusiasts and system administrators alike, it performs well and it's a good distribution for what it sets out to do. And that is to be a test bed for future Linux technologies that are gonna be useful in the enterprise and system administrator circles. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, then do indeed hit the little thumbs up button and also leave a comment down below suggesting distributions that you would like to see reviewed. And also if you have a preferable spin of Gentoo, because I am wanting to look at a Gentoo based distribution or Gentoo itself in the near future. Subscribe if you like this content on a regular basis and feel free to follow me on Google Plus and Twitter and all those things. Thank you very much and I shall catch you all in the very near future. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.